Now we're going to populate this model. Navigate to the refs folder and open up the scale silhouettes rhino file. Within this file, you see an army of people and a few different simplified trees. These people silhouettes were generated from a free illustrator linework file and made into surfaces. Let's select a few different people to bring into our file. After you've selected, choose Edit, Copy, or Control C. Navigate back to the main file and use Control V or Edit, Paste. The silhouettes come in at the origin. The silhouettes are already on their own layer, but you can see the trees went into the default, which made that layer turn on. Let's create a layer specifically for the trees here. Give it a color and move the trees over, and then we can turn off the default again. To move these people around, select them from the layer and then turn on your gumball. Use the gumball to move the people around, rotate them, and spread them out across the site. If you want to duplicate people, you can select multiple silhouettes and hold down Alt while dragging one of the directions on the gumball to create a copy. Finish your placements, and when you're happy, turn on the tree layer. I'm going to move to the plan view to place the trees. We have three sizes of tree to work with here. Let's turn on the background image. Select all of the rest of the 3D model, I've made mine into a group for easy selecting, and hide it from view for now. Turn off all of your snaps except for point, and let's begin moving these trees into place according to the sketch. I'll use the largest tree for these big outside canopy trees. We can copy and move the trees in a few different ways. If you want to use the gumball, press Alt to create a copy and then use the arrows to move it around. Remember that holding down Shift always constrains your direction of movement, so if you want to go straight over, pressing Shift and Alt while using the x-axis arrow is how to do that. You'll need to scale these trees to match the canopy sizes shown in the sketch. There's two ways to do that. The SC command allows you to scale something by first using a base point. We can select a reference point near the edge of the model and then scale down from there. Another way to scale is to use the gumball. If we hold down shift, the entire group will scale uniformly. But let's take a look at what happens with scaling with the gumball if you don't use shift. Each control point of the model, color coded to the various axes, controls the scaling of that axis. So the Y direction, X direction, and Z direction all scale separately when you use these points. Be cautious with gumball scaling. I'll show you why in a minute. So let's take a chance to copy and scale these trees around to fully populate the sketch. I'm going to be using the command CO for copy, and then use the point snap to move the trees approximately in place. All right, these trees are pretty much placed, so let's turn off the sketch layer and unhide the rest of the 3D using the quick menu. Rotate around and we see that the trees are all in place according to the plan, but there's a lot of variation in their base points. These trees aren't all sitting on the same axis. How did that happen? When we use the gumball to scale our models in plan, it scales around a central point rather than a selected base point. So all the models are now sitting at different heights in the z-axis. How could we fix this? We could go through one by one and move the trees vertically until they sit on the same plane, 
but there's no native command in Rhino that will pull these models down onto the landscape surfaces we've created. Luckily, other people have run into this issue and we can load a custom script to help us out. I've included the link for this script page in the video description. Search for the Move Project script and click to download. In Rhino, use the command load script. We see a message come up that it's an unknown command. That means our script plugin isn't enabled. So let's go into view, display options, find plugins, and scroll down until you see Rhino scripts. If this isn't checked on, check it and then click OK. Now we need to save our file and restart Rhino for this to take effect. Once your file is reopened, use the command Options to bring up the Display Options panel again. Check in Plugins to see that Rhino script is enabled. If all is good, you can navigate to where you saved the script file and simply drag it from your Explorer window into the Rhino window. The script is now loaded and ready to use. Let's hide our model again and put the sketch back on. We want to create a single surface to drop all of these trees onto. Use the Surface Plane command from the Surface Toolbar and create a surface based on the points of the sketch. Now we can turn off the default layer again and move the sketch to the ground layer. Make sure you turn the Scale Silhouettes layer off before you continue to the next step. Select all of the points on the trees using the command Cell PT and then delete them. We don't need them anymore. Let's use one of the commands from our script, move project each, which will enable all of the selected models to be moved at once instead of having to do each one individually. Select all the trees using the selection window, press enter, then select the ground surface as the target object. The trees all move down to the surface. Let's hide our ground surface and unhide the rest of the 3D. There are a few trees that need to be moved to conform to the landforms, and I'm just going to use the gumball to move these vertically. Turn the silhouettes layer on again and check out the model. Even with just a few simplistic trees and people, we can get a sense of this garden's scale. What used to be a series of flat surfaces now has depth with topography and extruded elements. So the power of these very basic commands is that we can, in the span of about an hour, have developed a model that allows us to understand scale and materiality and see our ideas take form from every angle. Being able to model quickly like this will help you understand where your design needs to change and grow. So working in 3D is one of the main tools you can use in design to develop concepts really quickly. One last thing here to do before our final video, let's move to the ray traced view and change the material of the trees to a dark green. In the final video of this workflow, I'm gonna show you what we can do with this 3D model. We'll cut sections, export line work, and learn to use our display modes effectively to give us some basic presentation drawings. Save your file and let's move on to the final video.